Hey, it's Joe Glines. Uh, during the webinar yesterday, we were discussing multidimensional arrays and having a good example of it. Um, I don't have a particular example of a multidimensional array uh, in the sense of an array, and this could have been an object that I'm nesting under, um, I'm sorry, it could have been an array I'm nesting under an object. But I wanted to walk through this um, little template I have that when I'm trying to nest something, um, just to remind me of exactly how it goes, because I don't I don't build multidimensional ones, um, stuffing an object under itself or, or whatever under it um, that, that frequently. So so uh, let me walk through exactly what we're doing here. So obviously I have a singles enforcer, so this is running once. Um, I just like having that in there. Usually I have a hot key, but I'm, um, I'm not gonna, I, I get rid of them for now. And then uh, I'm building some data here, which is tab delimited. Um, there's email, first name, last name, and phone. And we got, um, looks like four, four rows of it. Um, I do wanna point out one thing right here is the first two, the email addresses are different. And then notice we have John at the automator twice, right? Um, so this is gonna come up here in a bit, and this is why it's my exa an example also, because I like the fact uh, that you can use objects to, uh, to dedupe things by using it as your key value. So the first thing you need to do is to declare your object. This is gonna be the parent object. Um, that needs to be declared um, you can sometimes you can do it inside what you're doing if you push a value into it but then if you're in a loop of course it would always be doing that so i'm declaring it here first in row 10 um, and then i'm going to use this is for some people's a little confusing um, and this by the way i could get rid of this i think this is just looping over um, both of these are saying loop over this data and whether you see the new line or the return new line but um parse so each row let's let's do an example here so message box percent row um, each row when I run this is going to be so that's the first one is the header row the second one is that next row and so on right so so we're using stir split to loop over this data row by row right so that's the first way I'm parsing my data row by row and then what I do is I store it in row and notice for I, this gives me, I'm telling it use I as the index in case I want to use it for any reason. Um, I don't think I use it in this example, but um, it's just nice to have it there. So that's that. Um, this one, if this is the old way to do it, um, but it's just, it's, I like it because it's one row, right? It's, it's the, the whole thing's on, it's an if command on one line. Um, if I is equal to one, um, so that, oh, I am using I, right? If I is equal to one, um, continue. I could have used A index here. I think still works fine in a, in a for loop. I think it works in any auto hockey loop. Um, but continue meaning don't keep going because I don't want to parse the header row. Now, sometimes you might want to do that. You might want to use the, the, the names of those sayings to actually, like possibly if I was better at it, I might try to use it in here. I could parse it and that way I'm dynamically getting the header of what that was and then shoving data into it. Right. Um, I know Maestrith has done that. And what, what comes up is like these, all these names would work fine. So it's not a problem, but sometimes you have to wrap them um, with certain characters or, or shove them in a different way. But in this example, I'm not using the header row. Um, now, what I wanted to demonstrate here, make sure we understand is, let me show you right here. I'm going to put this, we're using stir split on that row. And looking for the first tab, stir splits in them, it's a really fun, amazing uh, function. And we're gonna split it on the first tab and get the content of the first tab. So when I run this, oops, notice it's joy at the automator, right? But that's because it's looking at this full row, but saying, give me the first one, limited by a tab, everything to the left. So it gives me that. The next time it comes through, it's Joe. And then the next two times, it'll be John, right? Uh, and that's because, uh, let me kill this thing real quick. This is why I like having my hotkeys because I can do that with a hotkey. Um, so I, I wanted to bring that up because look on this very next line here, we are creating an object, right? We're nesting that, we're using that as the key inside OBJ and right here, we're declaring an object to shove into that key, right? And this is where we're nesting it. This is the, it's the most critical part of this whole thing to understand and it's, you don't realize it because it's just one line, but this line 15, every time it goes through this loop, you're creating another object with the name, that email address um, as the key. And then we're gonna shove data into that object, right? And, and that's the really important part. And that's why I wanted to isolate out this whole, notice this stir split row one, 
for me, the reason why this gets confusing is because you don't, it's very subtle that the fact that this is in here each time, right? And now we're using a dot notation onto that object and saying, hey, now let's give, remember this stays the same every time it goes through, right? So the, the first time through, it's gonna be joy at the automator. Um, if you can envision, let me use my screen clipping tool here. We grab this, imagine this being here in front of each one of these. So so it's, it's there, the first one, and then here we do it again, right? Right, it's there and it's there and it's there. It's shoving those things into that object with that, right? And then we are using stir split. I don't think I need to, to walk through this example here. So we're splitting on the second tab. So that's that would be um, the first name, right? Which it's kind of weird because these are different widths. But here it's going to be joy. And then the, the third tab will be Senog. And the fourth tab will be the phone number, right? So it's nested each time. And now, the code overall is pretty straightforward, right? It's not overly complex, um, but let's start peeking, peeking at our data. And uh, I have some stuff down here. I just wanted to hide it for now. So there's, um, I have three examples where we look at it. The first one, we're looking at this parent object. So that's the, the overall OBJ object. Um, I'm using object to string to show the content. You know what, let me let me do that. Let's just do one at a time. I think it'll be easier to digest. So I'm gonna run this. Now this to me is what's really cool. So this is just this is just this, right? The title here. Notice here, Joe at the automator.com has in it, right, the first name, keep pair values, right? First name is Joe, last name is Glines, and the phone is that's not my phone number, but um that's a phone number, right? And it's important to note that's all shoved under my email address. And then John at the automator, first name, John, last name, selling, I'm just reversing my name, um, and then phone, right? And then the last one is Joy, same thing. Now, earlier I mentioned, remember there were two rows of John. This is also an important concept to get in, in using objects and how you can use them, but also it's a sort of a restriction. You just gotta make sure you understand for a key, you know, you can only have one instance of a given thing, right? Because it's gonna be unique. And so one of the reasons, I think I originally wrote this, um, Maesterth was helping with some stuff, and I'm like, hey, I got, a, I got, you know, a million emails addressed, I was literally like a million, and I'm trying to take these two lists and dedupe them, and, and he's like, we'll just shove it into an object. And I'm like, what? And he goes, yeah, if you use it as a key, and right when he said it, I'm like, well, yeah, it'll just, you don't have to worry about quote unquote deduping anything. You just use that as the key to the object and it automatically dedupes it and removes all the duplicates. And I'm like, this is brilliant. Now you might want to keep track of which one you kept if there's other data, right? That's, that's not part of this conversation, but notice here, there's only one John at the automator. Right, and actually, let's see, the 1322 is a number that stuck, and so notice here, this 6453, now this one went away, that was my point of like, you gotta pay attention to which one, you might wanna use some logic as to um, keeping the last one or the first one or storing them different, whatever, right? But it is a unique thing about it, is that using that key, and that a key allows you to look up the data in it, right? So this is my first one. This uh, is is basically displaying it as like a JSON string kind of thing um, of the, the, the object within an object. And let's comment that one out, move that there. Now this explore object, each these three ways, they all display the data a little differently. Let me show this one here. I'm gonna rerun my script. Um, and, and actually, it did, I had it set up where it wouldn't clear out the, well, we'll leave it. It doesn't clear out the previous one, but we can focus on this. So this explore object, it, uh, it's all the same data, right? All of this, nothing's changing. It's just how we're looking at the data is changing. So. This one kind of nests it this way, where we have the, the email address here, and then notice the indention, right? And then under that email address, it has a key called first name with a value of Joe, a key with a last name, a value of Glines, and a key of phone with that as the phone number, right? And, that, and you can see each one of these keys have data stuffed under it, right? So I like this one in some ways too. Once I got used to understanding objects, this this was great. I liked this. Um, before then, this was really helpful. Um, and now let me show the last one. Let me just comment this out because it'll stop at the end. Um, here, I take the object and then I use a for loop to iterate over it with a key and a value, right? So, the, so I use this. 
The key, of course, is gonna be, this is the really good one. Once you start doing it this way, you really start grasping the concepts and the powers of objects. So I'm gonna shove it in data. I'm gonna put the first item to be the key and then put in the tab and then the, um, the notice this is V because this is the V here, right? We're iterating over that parent object and the, the Vs in this case happen to be um, the, the data that we want. And so it's gonna be, um, this is dot first name dot last name dot phone dot cal id what the hell is that i don't i think that's something that i must have had originally because that that's not a thing right now let's get rid of that um so i'm gonna save this and rerun it and notice we just we're just looking at the data here again you know because there's only one john at the automator but we just shoved it in and we put a new line break after it and then just displayed it right just in the output window so that's how uh, it's displaying it um, I thought there was one other thing I was going to say about all this, but uh, it, it's, it's just a matter of, oh, you know what I was going to do was um, let's use Maestrius function, message box function, OBJ. Oh, and I, I, I actually, I did think of one other one I wanted to show. So let's, um, this is Maestrius message box function. I'll try to remember to put it in the link or in this page where I share it. Uh, it's a great function. It has even, even more functionality, but what's really cool is if your data is a variable, it will dis display the variable. If it's, you know, if it's a, uh, if it's text, you can, sh I'll show you how to display text, but if it's an object, it parses it out for you. So let me run this and you'll see what I'm saying. So notice w this is, this is how he's designed it, right? So notice there's no OBJ at the beginning of this, right? So it's just jot dot. It starts off with key. You have to, in your mind, remember this is under OBJ. So if you wanted to access this, and let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna be lazy here. Uh, if I could do this right. I don't wanna copy all of it, otherwise I'd... All right, that's good enough. See this clipboard? I could have copied everything to my clipboard by doing that, but I don't wanna do that. Um, but this is how it displays all the data um, I, this is where I like this format a little better um, for me because I can't always see, I like seeing the visual representation of the nesting. And uh, maybe if there was another layer, maybe it would pick it up. Maybe that's what's going on. Cause I think it does have that kind of functionality. But um, anyway, I want to demonstrate that, but let's, let's demonstrate one thing in here, which is what I wanted to show was if, if we wanted to do a message box, I'm going to do a percent so it's evaluating as an expression. And I'm going to say obj dot. I, apparently, when I copied it, it didn't copy it. Um, that's all right. Um, obj dot. Oh, and actually, you know, because those, I don't think it'll take those. So I'm going to use the uh, open and close brackets. Sorry. And I'm going to put in my email address. And let's say I wanted to get phone. Right now, when I run this, right, because I am accessing that after it's going to go store it all and then shove it in here, right, I got, I accessed my phone number directly without using a four object or whatever, right? And this is the power of, if you happen to know the key to something, you can pull that value, right? And this is, of course, this is not a nested object, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, I hope that helps understand some of the concepts um, of nesting an object. Uh, I, I would say, and I'll make this code available, just keep playing with it, use your own examples, swap the stuff around. And the more you do it, the more um, you start really grasping it and it becomes easier and easier. So cheers.